It can be really confusing out in the fitness, health, and wellness world. What works? What doesn't work? Is it vegan? Is it carnivore? Paleo? What about workouts? What's the best workout? What about sleep or, or biohacks? Oh my God. So much stuff to sift through. Oftentimes we end up arguing with each other in the space, making it even more confusing. Here, let me fix it for you. These are the fitness and health truths. They're true across the board with whether or not you talk to a bodybuilder, a fitness professional, a wellness expert, a functional medicine practitioner, or even a doctor. These are all true. Ready? Eat whole foods. Stick to that. Drink mostly or only water. Make sure you get adequate sleep every single night. Lift weights one to two days a week minimum. You'll get great benefits from just doing that. And then every day, walk a lot. That's it. If you just do those things, you're about 95% of the way there. That's too easy and boring. Yeah, I, I feel like something like this gets you fired up because you saw something again. What did you? What'd I didn't. You, what did you see? I was just thinking I, about. I think you're lying. No, I didn't. I, I did. I, it was. It, I'm. I was just thinking about all the the arguing and infighting in the in the health and fitness space and and how much that hurts the goal of helping the average person because the average person is just confused. This person over here says don't eat that. This person over here says it's the healthiest thing to eat. Yeah. They say do this exercise and they say that's a bad exercise. And it's like. And so people literally are just like, screw it. I'm not going to do anything. Or they try something. information everywhere. Yeah. Or they'll try something. doesn't work. They try one thing. It doesn't work. Okay. Nothing works. I'm not going to do this anymore. So, um, you know, what made me think of this actually. I was thinking of a conversation I had, um, with Bishop Barron way back in the day. And one of the questions I had for him was, um, you know, obviously he's a Catholic Bishop. So I said, you know, what do you, what do you think about other, religions that say similar things. There's a lot of similar messages in religions that have stood the test of time. And he said, well, there's something called spiritual truth. So even though I believe that my religion is the right one, there is a spiritual truth that can be communicated across mm -hmm. different religions mm -hmm. and spiritualities and all that stuff. And I thought, wow, okay. So obviously take the esoteric side of art that, you know, out, that makes sense. In our space, there's lots of different, I don't know, quote unquote religions or whatever beliefs but there are some underlying truths across yeah. the board. Like everything yeah. I just said. No one would argue with. Nobody's going to argue yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. They no, can't. No. They no. can't. It's everything I said is 100%. It's that's it. And, and it literally will, will take care of, you take the average person, 95% of what they're trying to accomplish, they'll get by just doing what I said. And you know what? I, I, I have this visual in my head, which is always dangerous. I know. Ramp water. Okay. <laughs> but um, Throwback. Yeah. Like um, I was thinking of the periodic table of elements, and it's like- <laughs> If you put these all together, like on something like that, it's like this is the most simple yeah. version of everything you're listening to right now. Building like you blocks. Can, you, can, you can literally mix them all together. You can create whatever modality and program and direction you want to go, but this is literally the the, the crux of what you need to be focused on. No, 100%. The, the, the crazy part to me is I, I actually I blame a lot of academia, man. It's uh, pretty unfortunate that the I think a lot of it's perpetuated by the smartest people in the space. Oh, so true. I mean, when you look at some of the most popular, you know, quote unquote, dumb fitness influencers that have, you know, millions of people paying attention to them, a lot of it's because they stick to very simple, basic shit because that's all they know. Yeah. And it works for people. They give them little hacks or little tips related to these whole foods, water, sleep, lift, walk that you're saying. They oversimplify very complex, you know, uh, nuanced science mm -hmm. and give people very practical and guess what there's a big percentage of people it <laughs> they have ends a up, higher success rate that's right it ends up helping and then you get the the nerds that go yeah. that's not what this that's not what the studies say they just convolute everything and they get so mad that they they come in and then they try to dispel everything that person is communicating and they talk way over the top of 90% of their listeners and viewers. And at the end, you just leave the consumer more confused about what they should or shouldn't be doing. They're, they're more concerned with being right yes. than they are with- Yeah, all with, ego. With winning, all ego. Right? I, we, I consider, we consider a win to be where we could get somebody to move in the right direction in a way that's sustainable, that they want to maintain for the rest of their life. That's a massive- huge win if you could do that right there. And you could do that repeatedly, step by step over time and take somebody who has no real good connection to good health 
and have them develop behaviors and habits that last them the rest of their life that improves their health. Okay. That's a huge win. It, unfortunately, there's so many people who just are concerned with being right. So you say the barbell squat is uh, better than the lunge. And I say the lunge is better. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about why the squat sucks so bad. Meanwhile, average person who could benefit from doing either one, okay, or both is like, oh, wait, which one do I do? He just said that one's bad for my back. But then that person said it's good for my back. And that guy looks jacked. But this person over here has an MD. Like what the hell is going on? Or I'm over here saying, you know, beef is amazing. And someone else comes along and says, no, beef is bad because the fatty acid profile, you got to stick to fish. And then someone else says, actually, all animal proteins are bad. Eat just plants and, and, and you're good. And it's like so insane. Our space is a, a, a huge mess of contradictory information. But what happens is if you could sift through it all, you know, if I had a big filter and I could dump all the information from the health, fitness, and wellness space into it, and I could shake the sifter. And then what it would do was hold back all the garbage and just the good shit would come out. Literally what I just said is exactly what would come out. Everything else that's either would either stay on top because it's bad information or it's nuanced information. So what is nuanced information? Nuanced information means it could be good for you or it could be totally bad for you. If you're one of those people with who has such a, for example, a... a a hyper reactive immune system to where it reacts to any food except for just meat. These are the people where carnivore diets work well for is they just, they have an immune reaction systemically that happens uh, with pretty much any food aside from meat. Uh, this individual, a carnivore diet, that nuanced, you know, aspect, it's, it's It would be good for them in that particular context Life for someone else. Terrible advice. It would be, Absolute horrible advice for health or sustainability or, or or anything else. So that's really it. That's the bottom line. Now, I, you know, that simplifies everything. We still have a big road ahead of us because now what we got to do is communicate to people on how they can adopt behaviors that make all of those things possible. How can they navigate in a world where the default is poor health, where the default is inactivity? where the default is not whole natural foods, is not getting good, adequate sleep, is not even walking anymore, is not even the default. So that's, we still have a road ahead of us. It's not, I'm not saying we solved everything, but can we at least start with like, here's, here's what it is, ignore everything else, and you can figure out the nuances for yourself, and some of it's true, some of it's not true, depends on the person. You've got three things you can control as a coach, okay? You only get three. And everything else completely out the window. So you have three things that you can guarantee that person is going to do to be, and they, they come to you as a, as a client and they're unhealthy, they're overweight, they're deconditioned, they don't have muscle uh, and they want to be healthy, right? And you can, you can only control three things to a T. Yeah. Everything else is all over the board and all over the map and you have no control. But what are the three things that you're going to control? Whole natural foods, uh, sleep, sleep and training and your workout. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Those are the three yeah, that I would think. Weights. What about you? Uh, no, I think that's spot on. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, <laughs> yeah, same. Uh, yeah, I think I mean, that's, I mean, that, that, that's the root of it. I mean, those, that's, that's massive. I would even, I would maybe change even the whole foods, hit your protein intake. I would mm. say that. I could argue back and forth for that because, but God, our, the fitness space has gotten really good. If you want to get more specific. Food. Yeah. But you know, that, that could get a little out of hand too, but I hear what you're saying because, uh, Technically, you could just eat whole foods and not get essential nutrients. Yeah. But you know what's interesting? I never ran into that problem with people who only ate whole foods who also didn't try to avoid uh, big categories of food. So I would run into that with people who ate a whole food vegan diet or something like that. But people who ate whole, not whole foods who were okay with eating you know, everything that was considered whole foods. I, I never ran into an issue where I'm looking at their diet and going- Under protein? Uh, I did. Maybe, okay, maybe not the optimal, but not to the point where I'm like, oh, oh my God. Oh, it's detrimental? Correct. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I mean, I just, I think that you you can make, I mean, this brings back to the, the, the post that we just recently talked about where Max Ludovere came on there and said something. And yeah. Paul did a, a, a video of it and our buddy Josh and it turned into like this, you know, debate on whether like this is worth arguing over, right? Is, which is what I feel like this conversation is kind of stemming from. Uh, you know, I think that most people, most normal people, not fitness enthusiasts, okay, 
normal people that struggle with being healthy uh, grossly underconsume protein. I think just hitting that, that would naturally satiate them and keep them away from a lot of processed foods. So like if I said, listen, all I'm controlling yeah. is you are your goal weight is 170 pounds so we're gonna hit 170 grams of protein every single day that's what i'm controlling like that's mm -hmm. and i'm gonna and i'm gonna take my chances with how everything else falls just saying whole foods i think that would put them in a uh a weight loss healthy perspective but i think if i'm if my other thing i'm controlling is lifting weights to get the maximum benefits from those lifting weights i want to make sure they're hitting that protein well you intake. you gave us three if yeah. i could add a fourth one that would take them from oh, no. you know you know, 90% to hundred percent of the way there, it would be protein. So I'd be like, you know, whole natural foods, uh, get good sleep, lift weights and hit your protein targets. You're, I mean, and then make sure you're hydrated. Yeah. Yeah. Now you guys are breaking more. the rules here. Forget one of the it. five things. Forget it. I mean that, yeah, that was the point of this exercise was obviously you're going to have to sacrifice yeah. something. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to miss somewhere because you're only at attacking three things. And I'm yeah. saying that the other ones are going to be all over the place. I would say that those three would, would make, but the, literally the like if, difference. imagine if like, okay, imagine if we were competing with another team and we had to get, uh, you know, we had a sample size of a thousand people and we had to loosely coach them over the course of five years. I, I hate these like two months, like, you know, whatever, that doesn't count. I could do all kinds of crazy shit in two, two months. That's not sustainable or whatever. Five years, let's make that the, the goal. And all we could do was give them general advice and they would stick to it. If we told them what I just said, we kick the crap out of everybody. Yeah. If we could get them to eat whole foods, drink good, you know, just drink water, get good sleep, lift some weights, and then every day make sure you walk, they would crush any other specialist with any other special diet or plan or breakthrough workout or whatever. They would get crushed yeah. because our, the, our side would not only get results, they'd get results in a sustainable way and they it would be and here's what happens with this this is why i like to say eat whole foods is because when people are doing this and on this journey it's an easy step naturally kind of controls your intake and then people start to modify it as they go along the journey themselves this is what you start to see so at least what i used to see is then clients would say oh i eat more of this i feel better I eat less of that i feel better and they would start to mold their whole food diet based around that which is really what it what it should be um, but this is, that's like, gosh, man, if people only knew that's 95% of the way there. Yeah, you know? no, I agree with that. I think that, um, eating processed foods is probably one of the greatest challenges for all people Period. Just purely out of con convenience, which is so crazy because a hundred years ago, we didn't even have that ability. Right. No, it's it so accessible now. I mean, it's like every gas station, it's every like convenience yeah. store, it's everywhere. So it's, it, yeah, you're fighting, um, accessibility and just the, the the overall cost of it is really low, and so it's like it's just it's such a natural thing for people to just like if they're hungry or they have a craving, it's like boom, they're going to go in that direction. You, have you, have you? How many people do you think, or what percentage of people do you think have ever connected the dots? Like to like when you have that crazy craving where you oh I want this so bad, and you just make the mental decision to start to eat the the boring prepped meal that you have already, like. How quickly that subsides and goes away? Yeah, yeah. I don't it's, know. It's you, you know who did that, that is that is the that is the hardest. I know. Yeah, moment right there mm -hmm. is. I have let's say I got it's busy, make or break, busy really, at work or busy people. at school. I got going like that, and uh, four or five hours piled up before I had ate. So my, I'm hungry, and now that I'm hungry, oh man, that, that drive through thing sounds good, or that whatever sounds amazing, and oh chicken and rice and vegetables god that doesn't sound good at all i don't want i don't want that and just making it past that right there to like okay i mean even I, I i used to play the game like i do with like exercise where i tell myself like okay um i i don't have to do a full workout i'm just gonna go in there and just go squat one set I'm just gonna go in there yeah, and squat yeah, yeah. one set, and then I get in there, and then you know, and I and Usually I give you do more than that. yeah, and I give myself the freedom that I, I'll just do one set, and I'll walk out if I really do not want to do it that bad. But many times I do it, or most times, if not all, I get in there, and go oh, okay, I'll do a little more, and a little more turns into a, a decent workout. The same thing goes when I have these like cravings for like a food. When I go, man, I really want that burger and fries like that. Okay, I can have that, but let me go eat this first. I need to eat this. I'm behind on my protein. I prep that meal. I'm gonna go eat that. And then after that, how I feel, I'll will determine if I go eat that. And 99% of the time, yeah. I eat that meal. It completely satisfies me. That craving goes away. I no longer want that. But it's giving you that freedom that I'm I'm not playing the game of, oh, I can't have that. That's not part of my diet. Or oh, I can't do that. I'll say to myself, 
Yes, I can. But I'm going to go do this first. Yeah. I, I, I owe it to myself to feed my body what it needs first. And then if I still really want that burger and fries, I'm going to go get it. And what happens is you you get that, and then that's Unless someone's super determined. Now they just doubled their calories out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll prove you. I know. You know what, though? Uh, people don't understand this. They don't realize this with processed foods, which, you know, when I think, when I learned this, like really learned it, it was uh, it was actually shocking to me. The the amount of science and engineering that goes into them is insane. It's so insane. People don't understand how much money, research, and development goes into into increasing the palatability of uh, food. And the reason why processed foods are so good at this is because I can process them. I can add ingredients and take ingredients out and add chemicals and do certain things to them in order to in increase its palatability. Now, people think palatability is just taste. It's not. It's the experience. It, they've identified this. Taste is a part of the experience. So is the smell. So is the mouth feel. So is the crunch. So is the residue it leaves, leaves on your fingertips. So is the bag color and the way it opens or the box yeah. or- Fluorescent I mean, orange is not natural. The, the aftertaste, the, the the melt point. Like I can't even name them all, okay? And what they'll do is they'll add things or take things away to achieve like peak palatability. And so what you're doing when you're eating a food with these foods is you're literally eating a drug-like food. That's what you're eating. You're eating a drug-like food. And so it's it, you're not going to win. You're not. They You have really smart people over the last 70 years who have figured out how to engineer these foods to make them irresistible so that you buy more and they make more money. But on the other end of that, you eat more. So if you think you're going to eat these foods and be able to eat in a way that's appropriate for your body, you're, there's no way to know because your body's signals are all over the place. Your body's signals evolved eating whole foods, not these foods. So that it doesn't know what to process or signal. All it knows is dopamine is going off like crazy and all these sensations are going off and this is the most, pal they literally tricked your brain. So uh, that's why just avoiding these makes such a huge difference for people. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this is just kind of funny because um, we end up talking about all these other people online, like, uh, you know, your, your PhDs and whoever, and they're all squabbling over this, like, who's the most right. And then I, I just immerse myself with people like I used to go to college with for like a weekend. And it gives me like an entirely different perspective, right? Like guys that like, to to limit themselves on on just sweets alone is like a foreign concept. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like you realize how far it is. Dude, you, we lose yeah. we lose relatability so quickly. And it in in that that gap gets further and further and further with like all these conversations like these guys are having. Um to the point where it's like you know, like I, we were, we were talking about like little debbies and we we're talking about like treats and things that like and um I just it was, it was just kind of a funny thing because I naturally would have like a certain point where I'd be like, oh man, I don't feel good. And they're like, you don't feel, what What do you mean you don't feel good? You know, like, it's like, you just got to keep putting it in. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, I don't know. I, it, it, to me, it's, it's the people that we're trying to help the most. Yeah. I feel like are, I don't know, like that mentality I'm trying, I'm trying to like put some brakes on in terms of like the way that, um, we just we just circle jerk all the time and and just think that every think that everybody's on board already, uh, and yeah. then we just don't have any conversations that are a little more relatable. That are like you know, well, I really do struggle with these types of foods, and then there, there's people that are arguing that like, well, you know, it's the calories or it's the amount of macros that you're you're you're, you're you need to balance better, and it's just like they don't even understand that much of it. So yep. it's. Uh, I don't know. I just want to throw that in because it's no. It's how dumb all these PhDs are. They 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 literally are fighting over the same twelve percent of people. Like there's twelve percent of the population yep. that are at that level of understanding of breaking down macros and the complexity of what's going on with food and that's so crazy. And they and they're literally fighting over the same twelve percent and the twelve percent that really don't need that much help. They're looking for the competitive edge to get a little bit leaner body fat percentage or increase a PR on it and like and we're all fighting over them. Meanwhile, the other you know eighty eight percent are floating around fucking lost and don't know how to quit eating seven little debbies a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. And and that's why I get so defensive over like a post like the one that where they came after Max Lugavere 
because I'm like, dude, the the reason why he's blown up and he's done so well is he's he made he you remember his post that he did? It's how he got famous was doing these comparison posts. Yeah. Of food. Mm -hmm. Like lit like such basic shit. Like don't eat this, eat this instead of yeah. giving people Here's like a better option. Yeah. Uh, like it, like and and breaking uh, keeping it as simple yeah. as possible. Like that's where most people are at. Mm -hmm. And of course it's the twelve percent that want to attack him and be like, oh, we're smarter than that. I'm like, okay, you are, you know, you and your fucking friends are that go to the gym every day and have been for the last 10 years. But that's not everybody else. Like, I'm in the business of trying to help. By the way, too, it's a smarter business strategy to go after the 88 percent than it is the 12 percent. It's just, it's just which harder. Is so funny. It's just harder, and they don't know how. Yeah, it's harder. It takes, yeah, it yeah. takes more patience and communication. Yeah. Today's program giveaway is Maps Anabolic. <laughs> If you want to win that program, here's what you got to do. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale right now. Maps Anabolic Advanced is half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Yeah. I have a question, though, for Justin. This yeah. made me think about this. Do you think more engineering has gone into food than to getting us to land on the moon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's wow. a loaded question. <laughs> what are you trying to get him to say? He's trying to, He's trying to, to call me out because uh, because of our conversation. Uh, yes. <laughs> I do believe we went on the moon, so I just want to put that out there. But I also believe that... Uh, you know, there was plans in case we didn't make it oh. that they had a studio. You guys fucked, I, my, hey, you hey. guys fucked my weekend up by saying some shit like that uh, to hey, me, bro. Listen, listen ruined my weekend. There's a lot of good editing. Ruined, I, wa I wasted at least eight hours of my weekend <laughs> wow. researching we that bullshit out. because of that. Because hey, of you guys. It's literally, it, of all the conspiracy, <clears throat> the crazy ones, it's the most plausible. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'll say. The most plausible. <laughs> The the motive behind it makes sense. When people complain to talk about flat earth and stuff like that's that, that, I like to hear at least that's the motive. The angle, yeah. Yeah, I like to hear a motive that makes sense at least. It might be crazy, I don't believe it, but okay, why? Why then would they do that? Right. And they never that never made sense. But the moon landing one, the rationale makes sense that we were in a cold war, we were losing the space race, yes. which was really just a way to flex at each other who could launch a missile into the other person's backyard. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and we, they already beat us. To they the beat moon. us with Sputnik. The Sputnik, the first person in orbit. So, and so we had to come out and, and do this. And so that's and, why. And we've been back three times and that's it. Yeah. And just the US. You know that, right? Yeah. yeah. Although I China, you know, China's going to fly to the dark side of the moon. They're trying to. Are they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. It's um, there's an international treaty, right? Nobody could build a base on the moon. I think we all signed that with a bunch yeah. of countries. They'll they'll probably rewrite it. <laughs> yeah. <Just like> everything <laughs> else. Yeah. I thought I'm like, why don't we just do it? You know yeah. what I mean? And then afterwards, be like, I don't know. Wasn't there like Sorry. a movie where somebody like they had allowed it, and then um, like they were doing these like uh, corporate advertisements from the moon, like yeah, directing yeah. it down, and people are like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine? I was like, I totally could see that happening. You imagine you know? if we let someone buy the moon? Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah. yeah. They got like a big billboard like on the front of the moon. It's all Tesla. Yeah. Oh. Anyways. Job, I sorry. Man. I didn't mean to yeah, just take that out. Was, I just had to throw that out there because it was on my mind because these guys the, yeah. for the audience that didn't catch that because obviously Dude, that's kind of an inside joke. I got something fitness related for you guys. Did what? you well, see what made us the most money? You yeah. know, yeah. The, the food engineering. Yeah. The honest. food engineer. <laughs> well, I don't know, man. You know, they just kidding. I have no idea. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So uh let me see if I could find this this person. Here it is. All right. I'm gonna so I can get their name right. Okay. Ooh. A a Canadian power lifter. Oh God. And Andres. Oh God. She crushed <laughs> The powerlifting record uh, for her category is it a sheet by over two hundred? Well, see, so you guys already knew. Oh, do okay. you know? Do you know <laughs> that? Do you know that over? Listen, okay, wait, over no. two hundred and something pounds for our over audience. The, the, the record for our audience has only been tuning in wow. for two years or less. Um, it was four years ago now, probably that long. Maybe ago. more. It's, it was. It was at least four years ago. Definitely not when it was popular to have this conversation. Right. Um, we had uh, two transgender, one transgender athlete, and then a, and, and then, and then a, a lawyer, lawyer and their lawyer come on the show, and we we had a discussion about this being unfair. This was when I think it first happened with like CrossFit. I think first. That's remember. why. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so, for CrossFit. Yeah. So and they were on. trying to argue. This is so. This can I just say how crazy this is? The most insane. This, if when I think to myself, the world's lost its mind. 
this is the number one thing that pops up because like you can be wrong and we can debate, but if I could see some logic on what you're saying, then I don't feel like I'm in a weird twilight so, zone. This makes no, this is no sense. I'm sorry. The, the reason yeah. why I'm bringing this up, it's crazy. So I watched the, um, the untold story of Balco last night. Mm. Fucking so good too. And that was Bay Area, weren't they? Weren't they? Yeah, yeah, here? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's actually with the the Bay Area. That's what uh, that's Balco, what Balco stand, Yeah. So a uh, lab, something co-op uh, co or something like that. Anyways, the uh, forget the name of the sprinter who broke the world. The world ben record. Johnson. Ben Johnson. No, 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 not Ben Johnson. <laughs> he was. <laughs> you just copied yeah. me. That's all. Carl. Yeah. <laughs> What's his last no, name? No, 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 no. He 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 broke he, the, the fastest. Is the, he the one that he got was caught taking the clear? For, for getting. I mean, they all did. Okay. They all ended up too. So let me fucking finish my story here. <laughs> <Yeah. I'm trying. laughs> well, you, you asked, asked to try and finish it wrong. <laughs> okay. Right, <go> so. <laughs> My point of why I brought this up and, and and interesting that you bring up you you brought up the transgender thing and then that I was um, and I'm bringing up that conversation. The point I made in that conversation was uh, a study that I believe that you had um, brought up years before that when they asked these athletes if you know if they if you could guarantee them a gold medal but they would die five years later like, yeah how many of them would do it and it was like an overwhelming like 80 something percent uh -huh. right like yeah. eight out of ten or nine out of ten yep. of these athletes said if you could guarantee me a gold medal i would basically do whatever it takes i would be willing to die five years later just to say i've won that there's an interview with the, the the kid who decides to take steroids or just do this and he at that time he was like the second fastest person in, in the world and he was really close and he was all natural and he's talking about the justification and he was just like oh at that point if you told me that i was i was like i would do anything mm -hmm. i would be yeah. willing to he said i would be willing to die yep to win that gold medal and so i've met people like this man at oh, the highest levels of sport there's it's, they're all like it's this a mentality yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's the male brain is is a very interesting uh that's the thing like they'll go to the depths that a lot of people don't realize they will go to 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 be able to be a champion come on and go play one pro football game you are yeah. literally almost dying every game literally. Yeah, and the point that was made that. in that conversation that i said what makes you think if we allow this that you are not going to see a men start to do it with the intent purely like it, they're willing to change their sex because to be they want to win so bad yep and and if and, and I remember them thinking, like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. Nobody would ever do oh, that. Oh, I would ever do that. Yeah. That's so like they thought that was so crazy that I would even say something like that. And, and I just think that we're watching it unfold. Yep. Every day, a new record is being broken. It's it's, it's, it's insane. You know what it you know what it is. I'm gonna tell you right. I'm, all right, we're gonna make everybody mad. I here's here's this could get stopped real quick if if feminists organized like they do for other uh, for other issues. But for some reason, I don't understand why this one's scattering them. But they need to organize because when they talk about, or people talk about the patriarchy, which makes me roll my eyes, this is actually an example of, of the patriarchy that they might try to define. Whereas men are coming in and trying to crowd women out. I can't think of a more, of a better <laughs> yeah, example. They're literally the coming in. This is powerlifting, by the way. This isn't chess. Yeah. We're talking about a strength, like, like it doesn't get more like, besides yeah. the fight Biological sport, advantages. Crazy. This is powerlifting. Just crushed a world record that had been standing for, I don't know how many years, by over 200 pounds. You have women train their entire life trying to get to this particular goal. And then this person comes in and blows it away. And I'm, and, and is standing on the podium like I won. This is insane. This is crazy. It's going to destroy women's sports, period. End of I mean, story. I saw the clip, um, and the the other two biological women were congratulating her. Of course, bro. And so you know how much pressure long, you are. To I, I know, but I mean, is it, I mean, what before the group of feminists get together, like you're saying, it's got to start with the athletes that are competing. Either one refusing to compete it all together, or in in moments like that, choosing not to stand let on me, the podium. Let me ask like, you guys a question. Do you mm -hmm. think this would happen? I mean, I would. That's what well, I would me, do. I was going to ask yeah. you guys. Do you guys think this would happen if it was? Uh, transgender athletes beating men. In other words, let's say the roles were reversed and it was guys getting their asses kicked because they had a physical advantage and they were coming into the men's sport. Do you think that part of the reason why they're not saying anything is because they're trying to be agreeable and sometimes 
That, that's my point. My point is nobody's fucking saying anything. And it's got to be the women that say something. Oh, yeah. Because no. the guys are over here saying well, this is crazy. To be fair, there are women that are saying things. Some. They, ju they just get censored and they get like pushed out of the yeah, media. Ostracized for it. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's just tough because there's no real like movement uh, in the other direction that gets any kind of attention or, or any kind of airtime. So, yeah, I don't, I honestly, it, there, there's, I, it's hard for me to believe like most of what we see isn't just like a real major minority of people uh, left like that they're portraying on the internet. Like I, th I think the, the majority has spoken through their dollar louder than anything else. And you're seeing that in all kinds of other directions. And there are a lot of like countries and also organizations like even the Olympics and things that have now banned, um, you know, the, the transgender um, angle to to the sports coming in, so it, it it is happening. Yeah, I really so I try not to get too like riled up over it because I do know that obviously all these posts and things are are designed to do that, right? To get us fired up and share, talk about like we're doing. Um, I I think we just made a big fucking mistake and didn't think about it. I think we thought, oh, it'll be a couple people and, you know. Our like, default is to be is, nice. You yeah, know, I think, most I, people I is think, like, I just want to be nice. I think that it was a default, like, oh, it's a way for us to be inclusive. Like, yeah. there's no reason to isolate a handful of people. I just don't think they, I don't think they thought about it. I don't think they sat down and realized, like, oh, this could actually really shape and shift women's sports how, radically. Listen, in how the next stupid decade. do you think people are that they didn't think about it? There are. Fight sports, mixed martial arts, and where where they're going in and beating the shit out of girls. Well, this uh, is powerlifting. Just, well, just to play the devil's advocate, Sal. I mean, how many transgenders are you around? Not very many. So it's not weird that you would think like I'll probably ne never see one in my wait, town wait, that or my sport. You, that doesn't mean so, you allow it. Well, just it, because you don't think it's going to happen, you just think it's it's you, crazy. You think it's going to be such a small minority that it's not going to make that big of an impact. Where it, it, clearly it is, and I don't. Th I th again, I think it's in. I think it's an honest mistake of Too leaning so so heavily. Too much in, credit. I, well, I don't think it's an honest mistake at all. I think it's. A, you think it was like a strategy? I think it's an ideology that has become a religion, and people are afraid to oppose it because it places them on a side, and everybody's been is literally playing along because they're because there's a lot of cowards that are playing along. I can't think of a more clear cut example. There are things we could debate and discuss where there's some logic on the other side. This is like the most ridiculous insane thing that I've ever heard in my life. So you're yeah. telling me that we have men and women's categories. Why do they exist? Why have we always had these categories? Why it's, why has it always been this? We know there's a dramatic, well, we don't, and it's like, we need studies. According, we don't according need to study. uh, Neil Grasta Tyson, he says that we'll in a hundred years from now, we'll look back and think it's silly that we separated men and women's sports. <sighs> <laughs> Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. Guys, I know he's been he's been hard on that. That uh, fool's direction deep in, bro. Well, it's just uh in a world where what you say is how you are judged by your virtue and, and morality, I guess, not by what you do. I guess that makes sense. I mean people say a lot of things that they think sound good. But in reality, in the real world, what's end, what ends up happening is you have girls losing scholarships, mm -hmm. girls out not placing in a in a ranking. So they made it made top ten, now they're eleven because somebody knocked them out. And it's it's messed up. It's backwards. It's so backwards for women. You know, women fought for years for sports, for funding for sports. Yeah, where they wanted to play sports. Yeah, Title Nine. Yeah, I, is it? I mean, okay. So do we? Uh, does it get? I think it gets corrected. I think it does. Again, I, I'm 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 gonna play devil's advocate. I, I agree with you. And say I, it's it. just crazy it went this long. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's, well, I mean, I think they just don't know what to do. I think they're like, Fuck, yeah. What do we do? And, and exactly. I think part of them was like, maybe this is all. You know, this is maybe the, I think I think because that's part it's like you want to like live and let live. Like it's that's that's fine if it's your choice to to change genders, but you know now to try and put it in in a in a in an environment like this where everything is like it's it's literally a meritocracy of like okay you know who's the best within this category and it's you know like male and female is di a totally different set of variables that we're, that we're working with and so it's like it's not fair to the people that are, have signed up for that sport yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. all right uh i got a cool study for you guys like oh. crazy study amazing study as if we needed more to show how amazing strength training is or resistance training. <laughs> but this one i did not anticipate okay so uh when it comes to your skin there's a lot of things that can improve your skin. Um, one of them, which we now know for a fact, is gut health and microbiome. We know this for a fact, right? So um, there are lots of studies now that show that certain probiotics 
can dramatically, or for some people, improve their skin with things like acne and dryness and stuff like that. Because you also have a microbiome uh, on your skin and the gut and the skin microbiomes communicate and they affect each other. So uh, probiotics like um, like Seed, who we work with, um, you know, we've had people say that it improved their skin from taking. Anyway, that's we've known that for a while. Exercise and how it affects the skin. They did a study where they compared uh, cardiovascular training to resistance training and skin. Mm. Resistance training kicked the crap at a cardiovascular. At a cardio. Yeah. At cardio. Both of them- Because of the oxidative stress of well, the factor? Both of them improved the, 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 the health of the skin. Mm -hmm. But cardiovascular training actually thickened the, like the collagen matrix that's in it. That, that's what makes it look more plump and young. Hmm. Strength training actually did that. So it came out as like a really incredible way. I, I feel like we kind of we kind of knew that, right? Like when you like if you were to compare someone who's like lifted weights we know their this. entire life yes. versus like a There's marathon a look like too, a marathon yeah. runner, a lot of times look really old and weathered looking. Yeah. You know? So I think I feel like there's I, now part of me used to think, well, is that because they're outside all the time? But I've just seen people who just do lots of cardio in the gym. Period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, they still don't have the same they still look. Have the same kind of look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what they found again was with resistance training. Uh, factors like cytokines, hormones, and serum, metabolites. Um, I mean, it all changed for the positive. Um, and resistance training increased dermal uh, biclycan, which is BGN. So this is something that, sh that kind of thickens the, it's called dermal thickness. And I think it has to do with the fact that my, my guess would be that strength training sends this systemic building signal to the body <clears throat> and collagen is a protein. Hmm. Uh, and so I'm imagining that the systemic like build signal is also telling the skin to build just like it tells more directly the muscles. The well, the I mean, wouldn't tendons. you think it has something to do with theory. like mitochondria health? Like it's probably strengthening that, which is like the, the yes. hub of the, every cell. And yeah, so but that's think. all you get that from cardio. Yeah. And cardio, pretty. cardio improved the skin too in the study, but yeah. resistance training just also did this other thing where it built it. It also built the skin. So like as you get older, your skin gets thinner and more like papery mm -hmm. because the collagen starts to weaken and you start to lose that like almost mm -hmm. like the muscle of the, it's not really muscle, but the collagen in the skin. Hmm. So isn't that cool? That is cool. My favorite word you said was biplacan. So <laughs> by, 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 I can't say it. It's yeah. BGN. Okay. <laughs> Just think. <laughs> Dang, uh, I thought I had BGN. it. <laughs> Did you see the, the, we're speaking about men and women and stuff like that. This is something that, I'll, I don't even need to tell you if it's a guy or girl, you can guess. There was somebody who got caught, getting caught on camera. And somebody was posting them on social media. They would sit around at book, like bookstores and stuff, wait for the person to read a book, and then they get down on the floor, crawl, crawl oh. up, and smell oh, their butt. Show, oh my God, you what? showed me that yeah. video. You think that's, what? You think that's a guy it's like the that? creepiest dude. You're just like, guy, oh. Of course that's a dude. <laughs> <laughs> These poor women, dude. Like at the, It was like a library or a Barnes & Noble yeah. or something. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so This he, guy's a sex offender and he's got caught. So they so they sit down like on a bench? No, so what she did is she set up a phone camera because she's like, this guy was following me around. It's really weird. And she posted it there, and you know, up there. And she's reading a book. And then this guy kept following her everywhere she went. And he pretended to be looking at books next to her. And then she's like reading a book, kind of turning around. She doesn't see it because it's it's getting recorded. But then he kind of gets down on the floor and he like goes up and like just sniffs her butt. Like, she's standing. Yeah. And he's kneeling behind yeah, her. Dude. Yeah, dude. And he did it to somebody like on the other side. She had the camera going and like it shows him like going over there. Like doing a drive-by sniffing. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like what is... What is wrong with dudes? That's I, weird. Hey, what would you do like if someone did that to you? Like, would you just? I'd be too. I'd be too like. I'd shocked. Blast them, dude. Uh, yeah, would I, would you try, really? I would do my best to fart. <laughs> yeah. I so would do my. But best that's to what they might be looking for, bro. If they're trying to smell your butt. <laughs> they might like. <laughs> you this guy's know? a multiple offender. He's oh, he's, a, oh, oh this is, he's like a serial butt sniffer. And I got like three wow. videos of him on TikTok. One, he's bald. One, he's got hair. He's wow. done this a few times, and he's finally been arrested. Did what? they arrest him? Yeah. Yeah, but he got let out. This guy needs to like hire. Yeah. What's it, what's the charges? House. He got let out. Excuse me, sir. No, I, I don't remember. I, I know. Mean, what are you doing? If you're not touching them, yeah, you're, you're not touching anybody. Them? Is that really is that really against the law to sniff butts? It's. I don't think it it's is. It's insanely creepy and invasive. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you He's don't, like, I'm not touching you. Like, yeah. like, is there like a a, a perimeter that you're allowed to no, be near somebody you, to touch, be creepy? It's touch. Yeah. So maybe if he doesn't touch, and he's just smelling. Ugh. I know. <laughs> they just need a big boyfriend to see that and just. Oh, I mean, I would be confused. Wouldn't you be confused? I'd be like, what? What are you doing? Well, isn't yeah. it kind of the same as like the the 
panty vending machines where you get dirty panties? You <laughs> I love how you point at Doug. Do you remember that? Remember that? Remember the information? Remember that finish you had Doug? <laughs> For the record, I actually have never seen one of those machines. <laughs> He travels to <laughs> Japan once. Yeah, yeah. I've looked for him, but I haven't once found year, him. Once a year, he goes here. He stocks it. He goes Obviously, with two he's an expert on all He goes that. with two yeah. suitcases and empty yeah. one in his truck. It's consensual, though. Those are, yeah, that's the same. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, isn't it the same? Oh. No, because you're buying them. People are selling them to you. You're not sneaking up behind somebody. But I mean, uh, the, 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 the drive for it. Oh, I mean, oh probably. Yeah. yeah, right. I mean, the same the same thing that makes the guy put his credit card in to get dirty panties out of a vending machine has to be the same drive that gets the guy to get down on his knees at Barnes and Noble. I would think a butt crack. It's probably same, but less of a drive. The other guy's like, he's going for it. He's you know motivated. I mean? Yeah, he's in the he's in the wild. <laughs> yeah, who's worse? <laughs> oh, you, who's worse? The guy doing the, it to actual people. He's no, the guy's got. I know. I know worse. Oh, uh, so there was an actually a local like story. I was like watching <laughs> well, the, uh, the, the news, is. and um, there was a guy that got caught who was actually in one of these like stall. I don't know if it was a, a bookstore or not, but it was definitely a store. They go like this. Is there yeah, something right there? in the middle? Right in the middle. Dang, oh, thanks. Got you. This is a real friend, right? I got here. you, bro. Yeah, yeah. I don't let you keep. I can't see because his mic's always in front of his face. <laughs> he's, he's gonna let you keep going. His mic is always like yeah. right here. You right. can't ever see. So his this guy's teeth was caught right and um he actually oh there was like a pete's coffee he was inside the toilet i like, think he moved it in his middle of his it teeth went back there. It <laughs> went <laughs> it just ruined my story I, no. I didn't see it before no, but now i see now it's gone there you okay, go. okay there you hold go. on he was <laughs> it. it's gone he was in the toilet inside the toilet and a porta potty. It was one of them that was like you could you could literally like crawl down in there i guess like a honey bucket and <laughs> was what was just sitting there just watching. Is that what they called him back just, in the day? In a, in a porta potty? I don't know if it was a porta potty. It was definitely a bathroom that uh, like he could crawl into. So whether it's it, only thing you crawl into, it's got to be. Yeah, that's, that's disgusting. You know, it's, by the it's way, like the worst thing I've ever heard. I think that there's been multiple accounts of people doing that where they get caught and they and the cops have to show up and then yeah, <laughs> that's got to be the most freaky thing. Really, ever. I don't know. Doug, Google it. Yeah, it's a man caught oh. inside. Come on, Andrew. Toilet yeah. of porta potty. Inside toilet. That's not right. And look thing. up Santa Cruz because I'll tell you that's where it happened. I'm not lying. Dude, that is uh, you gotta you gotta respect the the drive though. <laughs> uh, okay, so there is a peeper, they called him a peeper, the who peeper hid peeper? in portable toilets gets a three year sentence. Okay. So wow. it does happen. So there's that one. Yeah. Wow. I found I'm finding out know, he's a camera. Oh yeah, oh, it was a camera. Now that too. makes more sense. Oh, okay. Well, hey, Doug found out somebody oh, yeah. actually did well, it. Well, there's somebody actually did that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that sat inside the the debris, oh, if you will. The that's level of, Anyways, the level that, of you guys wanted to know something worse. Creepiness. And that's worse. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely that you win there, right? Yeah, so yeah. I think that takes the cake. But first first I don't know if I necessarily think the Barnes cake. and Noble sniffer is worse than the, the vending machine, you know, Doug thing. You're still I think there, that's huh? yeah. <laughs> Stop <laughs> associating <laughs> me with that, all right? <laughs> no, it's worse <laughs> because it's actually a physical Thank you, Doug. airspace violation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The other one's just the vending machine. What, what law is that you're you're touting? I, I mean, if I was some had somebody coming behind me and smelling my butt, yeah, I would think that'd be far yeah. worse than somebody putting yeah, a coin more, in a it's uh, more vending in, machine. Invasive, I guess. What do you mean you guess? I mean, the invasive. dude who gets in the vending machine, he's probably rubbing no, over but, his face. Oh, he that's but he's on his own there. Though. Yeah, you know, also it was the willing. I see you justifying this nest to, to provide those <laughs> hey, panties. Right? You know, so. nobody got hard. Like, that guy is totally normal. <laughs> it's totally normal for someone hey. to do that. Doug, what did you say, Doug? He always goes dark. Bro. <laughs> too far. I know. Oh, too far. All right, all right. I'm gonna too change direction. Should we call? Yeah. Let's get back to health and fitness. Okay, so I saw a post uh, by. Dr. Nadalski? No, oh, God. It's, I don't no, care if he's like, He care. wrote uh, a post about CGMs. Actually, I should pull it up. I saw it. Yeah, so let's see. Did uh, you send it to me? Yeah, I sent it. I sent it to you when you were, I think you were sick at home. Yeah. Trying to put you to work still. Yeah, yeah. Can yeah, you send it. me the link again? Yeah. I lost it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But on there, it's basically talking about how- He's talking shit about Peter Atia. That's actually what I did. We were just that, we just gave a shout out, I think, to Peter Atia, and we're talking about him, and then that happened to pop in my feed- I read it. He's clowning on fitness people like Peter Tia recommending CGMs, CGMs and the to reason, healthy non-diabetic people because he's saying that it's it's useless. Uh, it's taking not only that, but it's taking them away from people who need them, who have diabetes and stuff like that. Taking away. Well, so here's what I wanted. There's two mm. things. One, uh, CGMs with a coach 
we now have experience very valuable. Very yes. Insightful. Very valuable because of the individual variance uh, in terms of how you respond to different foods. If right. you have a coach there that'll help you connect the dots between how you feel and low blood sugar, high blood sugar, or how foods affect you, <clears throat> it's going to help you modify your behaviors. And we have now data. We have a company called NutriSense that we work with. Their success rate is insane compared to the average success rate with diets. Okay? Listen, we talk about one of the number one things that we talk about as a massive hurdle. And I'd love to debate this clown about this. Like is learning to help people become aware of how food affects them. Right. Yeah. They're so disconnected from their bodies. People eat foods, shit themselves and not even realize it was because of that food. That's how disconnected the average American is. A CGM helps make that connection for a lot of people of how their body is responding yeah, irritable, to all the cravings. Yes. You know, yes. That, yes, and 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 any any tool that can help a client make that connection for themselves, so they can better in turn have better long term behaviors, yeah. is an incredible tool. Now, do I think that uh, every one of my clients has to have that? No, it's an it's a it's a nice to have. It's not. Of course, we've been changing lives long before CGM tools yeah. were out there yeah. for people. So no, it's not necessary at all. But man, it's fucking cool, it and it's a very useful tool. Is he trying to say that they're in low supply, like inventory wise? That was part of it too. And, and and so here's the other side where, of the argument. Where, is that some some truth to that? Because I find that very hard to. Believe. Well, it, I, I've maybe, never heard Nutrisense say they're sold yeah, out because there's no. the totally different market for that. No, and I think and here's that exactly. So that's the point I want to make, which is if you want CGMs to be smaller and cheaper and easier to get, the best way to do that is to create a larger demand for that product. Because when the money comes exactly. in, exactly, and there's Innovation a large demand, and this is the else. same. This the is the responds. same guy we called out like years ago mm. when he first this. hit social media and was telling people to drink shakes to lose weight instead of food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh lord. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. No, no. 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 CGMs with a coach can be extremely uh, valuable. And again, if you're worried about taking them away from other people, like the more people that go and buy these and use these the more the market's going to respond, the more mm -hmm. innovative they're going to get, the, show the, the demand. cheaper they're going to get. And that's just how markets work. It's not uh, like this like <clears throat> end supply. Nobody's trying to produce more. It's not that, it's not that, it's not that, you know, complicated. It's not, uh, it's not necessary that you have a, my fitness pal app or a fat secret app. It's not necessary that you have an aura ring or a Fitbit. It's not necessary that you have a CGM to yeah. get in healthy, good shape, but you know what? Those fucking tools are useful, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as a coach, a trainer, who's been doing this long enough that I had none of those tools and then I now have access to all of those tools. Mm -hmm. yeah. They happen to be some of the better tools. There's a lot of gimmicky tools that are in the fitness space that have come and went over the last two decades that I've been training people and most of them are garbage and shit. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, something that is actually really valuable and useful comes along and it's like, whoa, this is something it that- It steps closer towards precision. Yeah. You know, when you get like valid data that actually shows you an, like insightful information about behaviors that your client has, you know, now I can actually have a little bit more accurate advice uh, to, to move the needle. So, uh, you know, it, it, that's ridiculous. Another example too of another, it's a PhD fitness dork attacking an, another good fitness person. Peter T is, in my opinion, one of the most respected guys in our space as far mm -hmm. as the information that he consistently puts out there. Even if he communicates some things different than us, overall, what we would yeah. agree on 99% of the stuff that he puts out there. So here you are attacking somebody who is one of the good guys in the space. Like, just dumb. Yeah. Dumb, not helping anybody. Hundred percent. All right, uh, I have a shout out for today's episode. How about a reverse shout out? I just don't found... follow that guy. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> nigga shout out. <coughs> How do you really feel? Can we do a reverse shout out? Yeah. Can we do that? If you're following, <laughs> stop following him. That's I'm what we're kidding. telling you to do. I'm kidding. He's no, cool. no. Shout out to. I just saw this page for the first time today, and I was dying. Yeah. Already followed him. And Justin's been known. So it's Anthony Vincent Official. Yeah. Was this yeah. the rock guy? Yeah, dude. And it's like, <laughs> cute, aggression. Dude, this is aggression. so it's like Justin. normal, motivational. This is so like, Justin. Yeah, yeah, it's like, bro, you work out. You look good, bro. You look I good. Tell. Yeah, and it's yeah. like metal. You're just looking big. It's yeah. awesome. Whoa, you got strong. You've been working out, I can tell. You've been working out. Whoa, bro, you got strong, bro. You've been working out, I can tell. I can see it in your arms. I can see it in your chat. I can see it in your legs.
been hitting the jam, you've been leveling up Pushing your limits, breaking mental barriers And staying focused, to turning into a higher consciousness You inspire me to do the same Wow, you got strong, you've been working out, I can tell Have you been working out? Wow, bro, you got strong, bro, you've been working out, I can tell Keep up the good work that's, I'll send this to your friends. Your sp- I sent one to my, my wife earlier yeah. today. Pump up one of your friends. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> Look, if you need a snack when you're on the go, but you still want to hit some protein, you want something healthy, something that's not going to make you unhealthy, go to Paleo Valley. They have meat sticks that are incredible. They're high in protein, only grass-fed beef. They also have pork and chicken. It's great stuff. They taste good. They're not dry. And again, they've got a good amount of protein. Go check them out. Go to paleovalley.com. That's P- a-L-E-O valley.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 15 for 15% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Aaron from California. Hey, Aaron, how can we help you? Hi, thank you so much. I just want to thank you guys for all the wisdom that you guys provide. I have soaked it all up and gotten into peptides. I think I'm a better mom and a better fitness instructor because of you. So thank you. <laughs> awesome. Right on. Thank you. All right. So my question is about goals. The kind that keep you going after you've been in the gym for decades or you've been an athlete. So I never struggle getting to the gym. I actually look forward to going to sleep at night because I can wake up and go to the gym in the morning. But after decades of being in the gym, there's a monotony to it. So I always crave little challenges, um, whether it's, you know, I'll work towards pull-ups for a month or push-ups or eating challenges or whatever, just to set up for myself to keep things interesting. Um, but I've kind of run out of them and, you know, lifting heavy, the more I, if I try to lift much heavier than I'm already lifting, I, that's when I start to injure myself. So I don't know if anybody can relate to wanting to have some challenges, some, some benchmarks to set themselves up for while also staying really safe and not hurting myself. So the idea of hitting like a big one rep max is not, is not interesting to me. Um, but I want to combat boredom. I would like to get a little stronger. Um, I've heard you guys mention a few calculations based on body weight and, and lifts. And I don't know if maybe that's a good place to start. Yeah, this is a, you're actually the right person to ask this question. Um, because you've been doing this for so long. You're obviously very fit. Uh, you said decades. How long have you been exercising consistently for? I mean, it feels like my whole life. I mean, it was an athlete, a swimmer growing up and I've been in the gym for a couple decades. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You're the right person to ask this question because, uh, when a, when a beginner asks this question, uh, the conversation is a lot different, but for someone like you, there's a couple things that I like to, uh, emphasize or point out. One is that at some point, the trying to hit goals model is going to have to shift because it just, it just doesn't work after a while. And I'll, I'll give you an example. You talk about strength, right? Hitting a PR, Getting stronger is an amazing goal the first three years or so of exercise. But after a while, lifting more weight, uh, the risk versus reward just isn't worth it. Like for someone like yourself, you're obviously very fit. You're obviously, you've been worked out for a long time. Adding 10 pounds to a lift isn't going to give you much in terms of any better progress, but it's going to dramatically increase your risk of injury. And so it's just, it's just not worth it. So um, that's one example, right? So at some point you want to shift your mentality to just the enjoyment of the workout for the sake of the workout itself. Now, that being said, I do also kind of understand what you're talking about in terms of things to train towards or specific types of ways to feel or things to aim for because it does give us a little bit of purpose behind what we're doing. And I would say this, for someone like yourself, look at the entire breadth of, of health and health, wellness, and fitness. It's a massive uh, sphere. Now it includes <coughs> obvious things like stamina, flexibility, strength. It also includes less obvious things like completely new exercises you've never really gotten good at in the past. That's a good one. Like you could try a movement you've never done before, like maybe an, an old school movement, like a one arm bent press or a suitcase carry or some something or a Zotman, you know, uh, squat or deadlift exercises and movements that people typically don't do. You could pick one of those. You're not good at it because you've never done it before. So I'm going to get better at it, do the prerequisites, do the mobility and practice this new movement that I'm not good at so I could build the skill. And then along with that comes some pretty cool 
uh, results. Then there's even less obvious things like, okay, and this is something that we tend to get stuck in when we've been doing this a long, a long time, is there tends to be areas of health and wellness that we tend to ignore because we don't like it as much. It's more challenging. Maybe we want, we want to avoid those. For me, for example, it might be mindfulness. It might be, uh, you know, more recovery based type training. I tend to avoid that because it's either boring or because I don't like what comes up for me when I do them, but that would be a great place to aim because it's somewhere where I could improve. So I might say, okay, I need to work more on mindfulness you know, I don't sit and meditate ever, uh, or I don't ever do anything like yin yoga. So maybe I'll put that in and, and make that more of a focus. Cause I know that that's something that I need type of deal. So those are a few areas I would say for someone like yourself, uh, to look towards, look towards the areas you tend to not look, maybe pick new exercises you've never done before, try to get better at them. And then in the entire process, try to get into the headspace of just enjoying it for the sake of, uh, of doing it. Yeah, I think a lot of times that is kind of a challenge, right? To um, think about what what that looks like and how you're going to program, how you're going to attack that. And so I, I think between the three of us, because we've spent so much time in the gym and so much time guiding and directing people, this has been our focus when we, we come up with new concepts for programs. Um, and really, it's just to kind of stay ahead of that curve, that natural kind of um, – time where you start to plateau and, and, you know, you, you may sort of get into that, that area where it is getting a bit mundane. Um, but there's so many different aspects to fitness. There's so many different pursuits you can, you can, uh, move towards. And so to, to be honest with yourself, I think in terms of like your patterns, that's where you got to kind of step back and say, okay, what am I most drawn towards and what do I do the most often? And then when you start looking at that and then look elsewhere and see what what else is available so if that's whether that's you know like the opposite <laughs> yeah go the opposite direction literally like go the opposite direction like really challenge yourself to be uncomfortable and uh i mean that's really the to sum it up this is such a this is such a good place to be um i think this is what we're our goal for almost every client is to get to this place right where you've been training for decades getting to the gym is not a problem it's a part of your lifestyle you absolutely love it. You're 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 healthy. You're fit. You like where your physique is at, but this is the same spot that all of us are in. I mean, what yeah. you're what you're experiencing is. I feel like I go through this twice a year, every year. It's like, man, I've been doing that for so long. It's like I'm I'm I've already proven I can get super ripped. I've already proven that I could be strong. Like, what do I what else do I want to prove to myself? What other challenge can I can I do? And so, what both Justin and Sal are alluding to, which is you have to be honest with yourself and say, what do I tend to gravitate towards? Like what type of training do I love to do the most and look in the opposite direction? Uh, the thing that Sal's alluding to would be like, you know, he loves to get really, really strong, doesn't care to do mobility stuff very much. So that's an area you should lean into. Uh, unconventional training, like the stuff that Justin loves to do, I don't do enough of that. So I'm constantly trying to add movements and exercises that he loves to do into my routine. Like, so Really ask yourself, what is, it that, what is it that you do the most of and lean into the most? And then look at other aspects of training and lean into that and try and get good at it. And if you have kind of a athletic, competitive mindset, be competitive about it. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, like I'll, I'll, I, a couple years ago, I got on this like Turkish get up kick. Like I remember the first time Justin taught me a Turkish get up. I'd already been a trainer for 15 plus years, never did a Turkish get up, never cared to do one. And then I thought, man, I want to get good at this. And then slowly was, and that's such a complex movement that I spent a solid year just progressing and getting better at every piece of that movement. So find something like that. Find something that you're not good at or you don't do a lot of it. Lean into it. Um, if you haven't already gone through, have you looked at all the different MAPS programs? Because I think we've done a pretty good job of trying to give a good variety there. Have you looked at all of them? Yes, I have. And I have, um, I'm actually in MAPS Anabolic Advanced right now. And it, it's so perfect what you're saying. Because I almost felt silly asking the question. It's like, you know, get out of here, lady. Like, you're happy where you're at. <laughs> but I, I, I appreciate this advice so much because um, the recovery days are a huge challenge for me. Like, I found mm. myself cheating and adding more things in and mm. not totally just devoting myself to what was there because I was so used to doing more. Yeah. So you're right. That would be a huge challenge for me would be to comply and learn to enjoy that more. Yeah. Aaron, yeah. you're the reason why you're the perfect person to ask this question is because sometimes people, most of the time, I should say people ask this question because 
they need something or they feel like they need something to get them in the gym. And so then the conversation is very different. It's like, look, you need to get out of this motivation mindset. That's not going to keep you consistent. It's got to be more about discipline. You obviously have the discipline. You're not going to stop. Like no matter what we say right now, whether you figure out a new goal or not, you're probably never going to stop. You've been doing this for so long. So this is a, a good question coming from someone like you because you're really just like, I like this anyway. And how can I make this more fun and enjoyable? And, and what other avenues can I look to? So I'm going to make some assumptions and you tell me if I'm, if I'm on point or not. Okay. So just yeah. off of what you're saying and based off your physique, I could, I'm going to guess that you really like lifting weights. You really like traditional cardio and you probably have a tendency towards doing more versus doing less. Is that, am I on point? hundred percent accurate. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to guess you probably haven't gone on a legit bulk in a long time with calories. You probably are pretty good about your diet. You like to maintain a lean physique. When's the last time you intentionally tried to bulk? Nope. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, are, are, listen, um, how long have you been listening to the show? Uh, well, our friend Brett and Shaleen turned me on to you. So a few months, but I've been going back and pretty much listening to as many in a day as I can. Okay. So you, you, okay. And then besides that, you have a lot of good fitness wisdom. You've just been doing this for a while. I could tell just from talking to you. So if you are willing to submit, okay, to advice, which requires a lot of courage, um, and a lot of wisdom, which you have, uh, around fitness, then I'm going to recommend that you go on a bulk with your calories and I'm going to recommend you start training in completely different ways. I want you to start training with a functional mindset. I want you to use more of sleds in your training. Performance. I want you to do more lateral stability type of training. I want you to do mobility specific type of work. And then on your days off, this probably is the part you're going to hate the most. I would like for you to find... A, some kind of a, a a mindfulness practice like yin yoga or meditation or something along those lines. And don't approach it like a workout uh, because you could very easily turn yoga into a, a workout, but go into it and work in, not work out. Okay. And try that once a week. Just try that once a week. For someone like you, I think you would get a tremendous benefit from something like that because you probably always teeter on the line of, you know, overdoing it. So those would be the things that I would recommend. The bulk by itself, by the way, if you did nothing else, but just increase your calories, I think you'd blow your mind I think over how you felt. I think increasing the calories and moving to a program like mass performance would do yeah. really good. It's probably different and unique enough that you're going to find some exercises in there that you're not familiar with, that you don't probably train a lot or have done ever possibly. Uh, paired with mobility days in there, paired with what Sal's saying, increasing calories, I think you'll get tr now. And then the true test is going to be the mental part. Uh, can you stay true to it and follow sure. it through? Trust us that uh, we're pointing you in the right direction. And I think if you do those things, you go through that program, I think you'll be very happy with the way you feel and look afterwards. So that would be my my recommendation. Totally, hundred percent. You you you're uh, what, what do you know what your body fat percent? You look like you're sitting in the mid to mid to to teens or so. Do you know? Yeah, that's, yeah, I would, I, yeah, I think that's about right. Okay. So I would go on a bulk until you get to about 19, 20% body fat. Um, and, uh, you know, have the strength gains that come along with it. See what happens to your energy, libido and hormones along the way. I think you're going to feel really remarkably good, um, with it. Embrace the, a little extra body fat, by the way, 19% is still very lean. Um, uh, so you'll just going to, you're not going to, it's not like you're going to gain a belly or anything like that. You're just going to feel probably more invigorated and healthy, um, from going on that type of a bulk. Um, uh, so, uh, start there, do the program. And I think you're going to, I think you'll really enjoy what it, you know, how you feel, but you're going to have to kind of submit a little bit to the advice. So I don't know if that, that might be the hard part. Doug, Doug will send you yeah. over maps performance. So you get that. That's so nice. And I really do trust you. And so I'm going to do this. Thank you so much. Oh, follow up. I'd yes, love to see how it yes, goes. Yes, please follow up. I'd love to hear how things are going in the next couple of months. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Aaron. All right, Aaron. Bye. I've had uh, a few clients that fit this almost specific. She reminds me of my old partner. Oh, oh my too. old partner, Tony. Yeah. Just yeah, like that. Yeah. Tell, tell have me. The, ha have the discipline. Yeah. Have the, yeah. Also who came later on became a coach and trainer herself. And like, tell me, tell me that putting someone like this on a 
400, 500 calorie surplus doesn't just blow, if they can do it, right. doesn't just blow their mind in terms of how they oh, feel. Easily. And, yeah. She'll feel great. And, and again, we'll be able to, um, you know, get strength gain. She probably didn't realize she had potential to get. Yeah. You know, not, a, not enough people, uh, I think re realize that eventually you get to this point. Like if you've been doing this for long enough, this becomes probably what I know she was, at. I don't know if anybody can relate to me. Like I actually think it's way more common than you would think with somebody who's been consistent, right? Fitness fanatic, your, yeah. your point at the beginning, which is like, you're rare. That's not mo most people are trying to look for excuses to be totally. motivated and they need a challenge just to get no, to the she's gym. Super disciplined. Yeah. She's already proven that she's just kind of like, I've kind of done everything. It's yep, like, what, yep. what do I do next? Which is a very similar feeling that most trainers and coaches go through that have been fitness fanatics for two decades plus. And so that's where you start searching and, you know, asking your, and being honest with yourself, what are the things that I gravitate to the most and what would my body probably you, do the best? You know what I should have said? Mm -hmm. The one th way that, uh, that I was able to do this, cause this is a challenge. I, I don't know if a lot of people understand this except for maybe fitness fanatics. It is a challenge to move outside of your discipline structure, you know, whatever you tend to do because it's new and I don't like it as much. And I really like what I do. Well, and it's deal. been working for you for and a it's, long time It's too. been working. The one thing that used to work really well for me, I don't know about you guys, but for me was whenever I would take another course, a certification or read a new book yeah. on something related to health and fitness, it would do a good enough job selling me on this modality or training style or way of fitness that then I would be interested enough to it just to reignites your passion again. Yes. And I think that's, that's an important factor in, in the whole long game approach is like, where can I find those opportunities to spark some passion again, uh, to get me kind of training differently. I wish I remember how long it took. Like when I had these, like the Turkish get up, when I went on the mobility kick, like mm -hmm. when I make that switch, cause I know when I first <coughs> make it, I, it's not fun. When I first make it, it's like, mm -hmm. It's monotonous. It's like I don't feel like I'm seeing the seeing much return. Nobody from likes it. sucking right in the beginning. Yeah, right? I'm not good at it. It's so, but then there, then it does switch over, and, and I and at some point you start to unlock something that you hadn't seen before. You know, like the the first time I watched myself like perform the Turkish get up really well, or or add significant weight, or get really good and see my squat depth come down from like, boy, that gets exciting. Yeah, because mm -hmm. then then it reignites that that early passion of like seeing the results totally. for the first time and your body changing when you first got into training. And so if you can stick with it and, and be consistent, well, and, I think trust what, the process. I think what you did is you moved your identity from I'm this, let's say bodybuilder to I'm the fitness guy that likes to try different things and learn new things. You move your identity into something like that. Uh, then it becomes what you I are, think that's a good do. point. Sal. like, I think that's part of this challenge. Like she has to like almost, let the old you die off 100%. of who you think you are as yep. a fitness professional Change your identity. and be your like, identity. like I, now I'm going to become the, the awesome Turkish get up girl, or I'm going to become this 100%. person and you have to like buy in. Right. Our next caller is Kevin from Pennsylvania. Kevin, what's happening? How can we help you? How much? Thanks for taking my call guys. You got All it. All right. Hey, I, uh, before I ask my question, I have to say being similar to your age, I really enjoy the banter and the throwback stories. Uh, that's kind of what got me hooked on your podcast. So, awesome. uh, All right, old guys. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Easy there, yeah. guy. Easy. I'm just saying. The last generation, you get their feelings hurt all the time. <laughs> say, somebody gets yeah. our references. Like, uh, I appreciate that. I know this, uh, this question's a bit of a repeat. I've seen it on your show before, but um, I'm a health and phys ed teacher been doing it for about 20 years now, but recently, about two years ago, started a strength conditioning course specifically for kids who want to get stronger and in the weight room. Um, my problem and my struggle is that there's such a variety of ability level. I have a mixture of girls and boys. Um, a typical class is 40 minutes, 20 to 25 students, but they range from inexperienced, never touched a weight before to lift, they've lifted with their team for years. And, you know, in, in their mind, they think they're experts. And so to program, I have them all school year long, which is great. And usually if they stick with it, I have them from 10th through 12th grade. So my question is, you know, how do you overcome those programming issues with such a variety of ability levels? This, this is a really this has good. to be one of the hardest yeah, I know. <laughs> hardest things to do right well now. you know what it is it, first of all it's a great question yeah um so what it is kevin the, the reason why it's challenging maybe you know this i'll tell this for the audience you got all these kids in your class you got a wide range 
of mobility issues, strength. I'm sure you have some athletes. You have some couch potatoes. You have some kids with forward shoulders, some pure, you know, anterior pelvic. Probably health. have some kids that can't some even stand on one leg. They can't even hold themselves <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah. Like, what do I do? So I th the mentality needs to change um, in, in your approach for the class. If you approach the class and say, I got to give them a workout for 40 minutes, you're never going to be able to accomplish what you're trying to do because you're not going to be able to give them a complete workout in 40 minutes when you're dealing with 25 students. Instead, you need to approach it like I'm teaching them in the process of teaching them something, they're going to get some exercise. So, okay, what does that look like? One exercise. Yeah, a movement. One mm -hmm. movement is the focus of the class. And what you want to do is break down the movements into a squat, a press, a row, a hinge, some kind of rotation movement, and a split stance movement. So you have five type, and there's so many exercises that fall into those categories. And so what I would do is today's class, we're going to perfect the back step lunge. Or today's class, we're going to perfect a hip hinging movement known as a Romanian deadlift or a deadlift. Or in today's class, we're going to perfect the overhead carry or an overhead press, or in today's class, we're going to try perfecting uh, a row um, of some type, a one-arm dumbbell row or a band row, and that's it. And in the class, what you do with the movement is you break that movement down into five or six different steps. So you sit with the class, and you go, okay, step one is the placement of the bar, for example, and then everybody's doing it, and you're walking around, you're perfecting it. Hold this, stay tight here, stay right there, I'm going to walk over here. And then the next part of the movement is you're going to sit down with control or whatever, so that's what the class – now, in the, the side effect is they're working out. They're doing some kind of exercise, some kind of strength training, strength training, excuse me. But what you're doing is you're teaching them the technique and the movement, and you're teaching them body awareness. And I borrowed this off of really effective uh, jiu-jitsu instructors that I've seen. Jiu-jitsu instructors, when they're teaching a class, have to run into something similar. Now, I've seen jiu-jitsu instructors teach six different moves in a class, and some people get them. A lot of people don't. The really effective ones will take one movement and the entire class is on breaking down that movement into six different pieces and perfecting each piece. And those instructors, man, they turn out students that learn so effectively. So that would be my approach if I was in a position like yeah, yours. Yeah, I actually have a lot of thoughts around this. Um, going through that whole process with uh, high school kids for for football training specifically because it, it was a very wide arraignment of, of different abilities in there. So I had to really rack my brain. How am I going to approach this to bring value and also be able to give, you know, those other kids in there that do have experience, at least something uh, that they can progress with and work on and, and train with. And um, one thing in the beginning, just to get everybody sort of grouped together was isometrics are amazing for at least, you know, starting to, to get them to organize their body and hold positions effectively. Uh, and this is something you can kind of work in with the group, whether that's with mobility drills or whether that's just holding these type of isometric poses. Uh, and, and you can even get competitive with that and challenge them, you know, with more intensified versions of that. But the main point I want to drive here is that because you have such a wide array, one thing that I started to move towards at the end of when I was training them was to group them up and to split it off with the more experienced kid who became the leader of that group. And that way they're actually, they, they want that responsibility of also being able to help and provide and teach, you know, some of these other kids, some of these moves. Uh, and it, it helped to kind of bring up their uh, confidence and also to like, um, you know, they, they, they got a lot more out of it uh, because they felt a, a bit more responsibility, I think. That's actually brilliant. I, I wouldn't even have thought to do that, but then to probably break off in a, a handful of groups and pick who you think have, that are the most skilled to lead those groups, which right. what's great about that is now you can you can regress the movements and not feel like you lose them because you're giving them a teaching role. Totally. Yeah. So they feel like that's a great idea. You know what I'm saying? Like I love that. Yeah. So they don't feel. Otherwise, they're going to be like, "This is lame." Yeah, I can do get bored and, and frustrated. <laughs> so Justin, what about like uh, for Kevin? If he, if you envision like our our map symmetry program, would you like uh, it, give me like an idea of like would you do like in a, a workout or a day? Right. He's got a, probably a 50 minute class with them. Mm -hmm. Would you do like two or three isometrics as an, an entire group? Yeah. 
and like to take us all through like two or three isometrics. They could be related to if you're teaching like one of the complex movements. Like, so we had squat was like our main focus for the day. Like we would do maybe two isometric movements to, you could, you could kill two birds with one stone with that in terms of like having them hold poses um, and even a lunge stance and having them hold that pose and then having them actually go work on the squat by itself as its own specific skill that you're trying to develop for that workout. Okay. Um, so that would be one thing, but yeah, we, we do have that structure pretty nicely in, um, in symmetry. And that was kind of like a little bit of the motivation of it as well as like, you know, how do we address the fact that like a lot of people can't are, are all over the place. Like they, they haven't even, they don't have much control over their body uh, to begin with. And, and so you can actually keep a good eye on, uh, you know, who actually has depth, whose, you know, knees are buckling um, and, and you can walk around and you can kind of cue a little bit more effectively when you have it, you know, at a nice slow tempo. I mean, even doing just pause reps, right? If you wanted to, to have that as like the progression, you start isometric, go to pause rep. Uh, and then you do exactly what Sal said, is just stick with the main, focused uh uh exercises that are are gonna you know move the needle the most two yeah. two things kevin one do you do you have uh map symmetry yet no i have anabolic and performance but it okay so have I'll, I'll have doug send symmetry so you have access to that so you can pull from some of the movements that we have in there i think that'll be valuable to you second thing did right. you ever happen to listen to i don't know how long you've been listening to us did you listen to the interview that justin did with joe defranco I did not. Okay, so that's on Joe DeFranco's podcast. So look okay. up Justin Andrews from Mind Pump on Joe DeFranco's yeah, we podcast. Went into a lot of depth. They had a really good conversation around training, you know, high school athletes, you know, and how 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 to accomplish that. And Joe's been doing this longer than all of us. Yep. Uh, I'd okay. say he's kind of he's the brilliant. He's the the guru. Yeah. Sure. And so I I actually really enjoyed that conversation, hearing that the his perspective and Justin and him kind of ping ponging back and forth on the challenges of training kids. I think you'll get a lot of value from that episode. So listen to that episode. Pull from map symmetry, and hopefully, what we we kind of threw at yeah. you gives you some 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 sort of help. But you are doing the Lord's work. That yeah. is probably uh, it's the really hardest. Tough. That is, that is it's tough. That's tough to organize. The, no, one of the yeah, hardest. Yeah, I do have it. I have a chance to get them in the classroom every so often too, and I, I really enjoyed the resistance training revolution. Do you think, Sal, that would be a book that I could oh, use yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. at a high school level? to develop a curriculum 100 oh, percent. Oh, i wrote it i, I wrote that. it specifically so that it was easy to understand uh for the average person and it's not written necessarily bro that would be before. awesome to break up the chapters yeah, in a year totally. to break up the yeah. chapters and teach that so the thing, while you're, the thing to awesome. keep in mind right. kevin the, the real the big thing to keep in mind is when you know there's a there's a bit of a difference in what you're doing because you're not training a, an athletic team you're training students who are taking this class as part of their curriculum when you're training an athletic team, uh, although some of the challenges are the same, one of the differences is that they signed up for a sport, they know what they're training for, and they all should have the goal of improving their performance. A lot of the kids in your class are probably like, well, I'm here, I'm doing it, I don't play football, I don't play, ba play baseball, like what are we doing here? So you know, I volunteered to teach uh, some classes years ago, and so of course I went in and taught, talked fitness. And I found I was way more effective when I was able to sell what I was doing before the class started. And so the way I would present strength training was I would, and I look, you look at the whole class, you got a whole bunch of different students in there. So I'm like, okay, some of these people are going to want to get strong. So I talk about the benefits of building strength. Some of these other people uh, want to improve their uh, their um, performance academically. I'm going to bring up a study that shows how you, you can you improve cognitive function. I'm going to talk about hormones how it balances out hormones. I'm going to talk about how balancing hormones out clears up your skin. Why am I doing that? Because I know there's some girls in there, for example, that that'll ring, a, that'll light up some stuff in them. Like, oh, it'll help me with my skin. And so I would do like this 10 minute, you know, here's the exercise we're going to do. Here's what it works on. Here's some of the benefits that happen to the body as backed up by some of these studies. And then I know I'd, I'd, I'd sell a majority of the students on wanting to try. And then I would take the class and I would teach them and the side effect being that they're doing some exercise versus I have a class of kids who's there to work out, then it's a little bit of a different focus. But if you go in there trying to work them out, it's going to be really challenging for you because uh, you, there's such a, you're going to have some, it's going to be so hard to work them out properly because some are going to be good. Some are not going to be so good. So 
It's really about how yeah, that, how that's approached. That. If they have the if they have the why behind it, they <laughs> tend to do much better. Hundred so, percent. Yeah. Well, I, totally. We all, we all have a lot of passion in this direction too about totally. I- impacting the generation coming up. So I tell you what, Kevin, if you if whatever you put together, if you want us to look at it and 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 give critiques or or add or take away from anything, um, we're more than willing. So if you put something together on on paper or email or whatever and send to us. Um, I'd be more than willing to look at it with the guys yeah. and and kind of put our two cents in. But I, I think you're heading in the right direction. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. That was a lot of great advice. Thank you very much. You got it, man. All right, All right Kevin. Thanks for Good calling Good luck, in. man. All right, thanks. <laughs> yeah, if I, if Hard, I didn't, hardest thing ever. If I didn't do this, that's probably what yeah. I would do. Really? This, yeah, I would probably oh, work with... I'd pull out the heist, last bit of hair. Heist, I know. <laughs> it's a two more. I would I would work either with high school students uh or college students and not athletes uh but but reg- everyday regular kids and really try to convert them into figuring this out and, and, and implementing their lot. Cool. Into you get lives. them, I'll take the athletes. Of yeah, course yeah, you would. Yeah. I would not I would, I would way rather have the athletes too like the <laughs> yeah. kids cuz you brought up something that's so true is like you have a class of they're there because they have to be. Oh yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, <laughs> there's a good chance probably thirty percent of them don't want to be. Yep. Listen, I <laughs> I remember that's a, that's sp- specifically volunteering for this yeah. cl- for these classes. They were fifth and sixth grade, and I'm sitting there, and I remember the first one I did. I'm trying to like teach them stuff, and I could see half of them were interested, the other half weren't interested. I'm like, I got to sell these kids mm-hmm. on why they got to do this. So I'm like, what are these kids interested in? <laughs> well, someone someone want to build strength and muscle, right? You got the guys in the class want to. Some of them want to get leaner. I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about metabolism. Some of them probably want to be better at schoolwork. I'm going to bring up a study about right. how it improve. And so then I would try to cover all the things I think that would attract most of these kids. When I did that, the buy-in was there. Oh, that's the easy. best approach. Just like he said, like they need the why. And I think like that's a, it's brilliant that he thought of your book because it really does like outline like all of these benefits totally. that you get, which a lot of kids just don't realize because like, no. it's not being taught. Our next caller is Stephen from the UK. Stephen, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, guys. How you doing? Good. Good, right, man. Good. Yeah, I've been listening to a podcast for a few months. Really enjoy it. I am. Um, I have two young kids myself, so uh, a lot of what you talk about is very relevant to myself. Awesome. Yes. Um, so yeah, I kind of um, I've I titled the email plateau, and I kind of feel like that's where I'm at now. A um, bit of background about myself, I've been training sort of inconsistently for five plus years um, and consistently for the last 18 months. Um, during COVID, um, as many people did, I kind of stopped all training, ate everything in sight and put on a lot of weight. Um, ended up around about sort of 105 kilos and then over the last sort of 18 months, I've lost all of that and got down to sort of 80 kilos. Um, so, you know, had some pretty good progress week on week, always sort of seeing changes and stuff like that. Um, so that was kind of through resistance training, more focused on my diet, um, and working with a personal trainer and doing my own stuff. Um, my goal was kind of to get down to where I had visible abs. Um, and then from there, I was going to kind of, you know, increase the calories, push on and, uh, try and build some muscle really. Um, but kind of. The last sort of three months or so, I've kind of stopped seeing any any changes. Uh, I've sent you guys some pictures, but yeah, I kind of got down to that point. I was constantly seeing changes. And then the last three months, I feel like not much has been changing. Um, my instant reaction was to drop the calories, which, you know, seems like everyone always kind of goes to that. And from listening to you guys, that's probably not the answer. Um, so I'm just looking for a bit of advice really on how I can kind of kick on, push on and and where do I go from here? Yep. Steven, give me a little insight on your training volume. Like how, how many days a week are you training in the gym? Would you say you're relatively intense the way you train? And then I think I see you're aiming around 2000 calories. So give me a little insight on what your training looks like. Yeah, that's it. So I tend to do three to four days a week. Um, I have been doing a push pull leg split, um, for, for quite a while now. <clears throat> um, the training is pretty intense. It's good training. Uh, I also play soccer. Uh, or football, as we call it over here, sort of once a week as well. So do a little bit of cardio through that, but it's primarily just, you know, strength training. Steven, um, so real quick, reading your question and, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, kind of, you've lost, what, 25 kilos? He's lost a lot of weight. He's done well. 60 pounds yes. almost. Yeah. So, and, and through that, has that, has that been a consistent, like uh, that whole process, you've been focused on the weight loss that entire time? 
You're plateauing because yes. it's time to reverse. Yeah, it was time to bolt. That's, that, that's the bottom line. I mean, you actually look great, bro. Yeah, yeah you've, done, but, you've done incredible work. You need to go on a little bit of a bulk. You need to go on a calorie surplus uh, and start focusing on gaining muscle. And I, you know what's probably going to happen, Stephen, is you're probably going to get leaner. Yeah. Through that, remember, yeah. body fat percentage is means it's a percentage of your body weight. It's how much body fat you have as mm -hmm. a percentage of your body weight. So let's say you went on a good bulk and did some good strength training. And let's say you gained five kilos of lean body mass, right? That's a lot. It's like 12 pounds of, for, yeah. for people mm -hmm. listening. Let's say you gained five kilos of lean body mass and you've lost zero body fat in terms of the amount of pounds, okay? Or, or amount of uh, you're kilos. Leaner. You're now leaner though because you're a, you have more body mass. So your body fat is a lower percentage now of your total body mass. That's probably what will happen if you do a proper reverse diet, a proper bulk. So 2,000 mm -hmm. calories a day, you know, guy your size, uh, doing that much activity, it's kind of low. Yeah, I put you around 2,500. I'd put you up 500 calories, yep. keep the protein high, keep it there for a little while, bump it up <clears> again <throat> a little bit, maybe 100, 200 calories, get yourself up to closer to 3,000 calories or higher, and then attempt doing a cut again, and uh, then you'll see it'll start to yeah, happen. Yeah, I'd love to see you at 2,500 calories. I'd love to send you, put, uh, put you on MAPS Anabolic, switch you from the split to kind of a full body routine. Uh, the two of those mm -hmm. things combined, I think, is going to be great for you. And then the goal would be, I'd, I'd start you at 2,500 in MAPS Anabolic. The goal would be to like slowly increase calories to get you over 3,000, to get you up to 3,000 plus calories before I bring you back down the other yeah, way. That's it. So if I, if and then and then we're in a very sweet spot, bro, because you you look great, you've done great, but this is super common when somebody has a lot of weight to lose is eventually what happens is they, they get to a place where they're not all the way to their goal. Um, but the good news is you're calling us right now. You were only pushing at 2000. I see people that do crazy shit where they're pushing down to 1100 yeah, calories yeah. and doing cardio every mm -hmm. day. And you're, you're at the right place right now to go the other direction. Like Sal saying, and I think you'll see tremendous benefit. The main thing was going to be, which is almost always with somebody in your situation is the mental piece is don't like the initial bump in calories and, and training that is going to put on a little bit of weight. Most of it's going to be water. So You'll you gain two or three kilos, right? Yeah. Out the, yeah. Right. 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 Out the gates of just water. Yeah. So don't, don't freak out. Okay. You're not going to, you're not going to put on all that body, especially if you make a good choices. Obviously, if you go and you start eating a bunch of crap, but you're, Eat, make good whole food choices with those extra calories and train train MAPS anabolic, and I swear to God, you're going to feel great. Yeah, because the other option is this, is you just cut your calories even more, but then you're going to end up around 1,500, 1,300 calories, and I'm going to tell you right now, you probably still will plateau with your body fat percentage. What will happen is you might lose muscle along with the body fat. You're getting into the, to the calorie range now where keeping muscle becomes very difficult. Because you might have someone who's like, well, I just cut your calories, but your body's probably going to try to hit reach homeostasis by reducing muscle mass. So you might lose weight on the scale, but your body fat might actually stay the same. And how shitty of a position would that be? You lost, you know, another three or four kilos, but your body fat is the same. Uh, that's not really a good trade. So reverse diet yeah. and focus on getting stronger. Um, and then once you get your calories up to a certain point, uh, we're, you know, both Adam and I agree around 3000, then you can cut from there and then you'll <clears throat> getting leaner will be easy. It's, uh, it's interesting that you recommend that because I actually, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I increased the calories um, and I felt so much stronger in the gym as a result. You yeah. know, like all of my lists have been going up considerably. Um, oh, bro. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Think your I your testosterone is going to go up. Yeah. Your strength's going to go up. Your energy is going to go up. Remember, you know, here's the other thing too that people don't consider. Let's say you bump your calories 500 um, and you don't increase your activity level. Okay. But you get stronger. Guess what you've done? without realizing it, you've increased the volume of your training. Remember volume is sets times reps times weight. So even though this is where people get confused as they look at their workout, and they're like, but my workouts is exactly the same. It is not. You've added three reps here, four reps there, 10 pounds here, 15 pounds there. You're training more volume just because you got stronger, meaning you're fueling your body to be able to burn more calories even in your workouts. So it's just a better, it's just, it's not a better approach. It's the only approach. Like I said, if you do it the other way, it's going to fail. So you know, bump them up again. You're in a good place, bro. You're going to do good. Just add those calories, be consistent with it. And, and you're going to be solid. The only thing, the, uh, the thing I'm watching for, if you were my client is, 
uh, rapid weight gain and not strength. Gain. That'll be if you just eat a bunch of garbage. Yeah, if you eat if you eat trash, you have the 500 calories in there. There's a chance that you don't get stronger and you put on bad weight. But if you make yeah. good whole food choices and and stay consistent with the training, you should get stronger yeah. in the in in the gym. And we shouldn't put on that much. Yeah, weight. don't don't add a pint and go to the chip shop, and that's how you're going to add your calories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, it's quite difficult to add calories like cleanly, but I mean, I've, I've been able to do it, but yeah, it's very easy to jump to like a pizza or something like that just yeah, to yeah, increase yeah. the calories. No, that's not the way to do I'm, it. You know, one of the, one of the easiest ways to do it, I don't know. I mean, obviously if I had your diet in front of me, I could do, show you some real easy, but a lot of times I catch people that are low calorie like this, doing things like egg whites or chicken yeah. breasts, just like eat fattier, eat fattier choices and like get, give yourself a, some tri tip, you know, or give yourself or hamburger. Yeah. Yeah. Or a hamburger every once in a while, give yourself some whole eggs, you know, or throw a, an ounce of cheese on your or scramble put some olive morning. oil on your vegetables yeah so yeah there's there's mm. easy ways for you to bump without you know going the extreme other direction too yeah awesome all right steven all right man doug's gonna send that uh, oh. maps in a bulk your way yes brilliant thank you very much guys you got all it right. thank you see you later <clears throat> You guys like my uh, my my cultural <laughs> yeah. re- my culturally relevant? I was waiting for comment. fish and chips. <laughs> no, 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 that's too obvious. Yeah, the, the chip pipe. shop. My yeah. wife, my wife, chip my shop. wife's family's from England, so every once in a while I hang out with them and I hear them talk, and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot you guys <laughs> yes, say that kind of stuff. <laughs> you and your pick up a couple of lingo. You know, a little bit of fucking. Lingo. <laughs> I did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's in a great man. What a what a uh, great on the transformation. Already. But hey, by the way, expected. Dude, the, what what happened to yes. him is expected. If I was training him, I I know this point is going to happen. And yeah. we're gonna have to reverse. Yeah. It. In fact, That's you it. what you would have done is a little bit earlier. Oh yeah, I would have reversed. You would have reversed we got there. and broke up the the long diet that he's been on. But totally. I tell you what, though, all in all, I mean, I love when I hear stories like this and people that have been listening to the podcast because he's asking and making the decision at the right time. Like he didn't go add three, four days of yeah, hour long bouts of cardio. <laughs> he didn't right. cut it down to fifteen. Because and by the way, all those things would result in him continuing to lose more weight. Like he could have went to fifteen hundred calories, and we. That, by the way, could be quick advice. Like if you wanted to drop another five yeah. pounds, it'd be like, "Hey, bro, go uh, five days a week, an hour of cardio now, and drop down to fifteen hundred calories. You'll get, you'll lose weight, but you'll probably end up losing as much muscle as you did as you did body fat, and then you're in a place that's not sustainable, yeah, where his body is back. asking him to re- to get more calories right now. The next caller is Jennifer from North Carolina. Hi, Jennifer. How can we help you? Hi guys. Um, so I have a quick, do you guys read the emails that we send in first? So you yeah. know what the background is? Yes, or we do. do yeah, we do. Know? No, no, we do, but okay. we want you to we tell want us you to sum it up though. Too. Yeah. There's people yeah. watching. Okay. Right now. All right. So I'm 51. I am in the process of going through menopause. And, um, so I've been overweight my entire life. Um, I used to like in high school, like, so we're talking like 30 plus years ago, uh, used to run and do exercise and everything like that. But, um, insulin resistance, metabolic, blah, 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 whatever you want to call it. So bariatric surgery was recommended to me actually 11 years ago, um, but I decided against it and continued to struggle with my weight. Um, I finally did get the surgery last September. So we're coming up on my one year anniversary of that. Um, My surgeon's not happy with me because I am not losing weight as quickly as he would like for me to do. But um, I told him from the very beginning, I would rather lose it slowly because then I don't have as much loose skin that I have to worry about. So it was total vanity on my part. Um, So, but anyway, so the weight is coming off. I started at over 300 pounds. The last time I weighed myself, I was 303. Um, I did gain weight after that, but you know, I never weighed myself again. So I am now updated letters since that email, updated numbers, sorry, since that email. I am now down to 215 and my, I do have in body scans that I do with my nutritionist. Um, and so let's see, I think, uh, yeah, my lean body mass is now 128.8 instead of 123 from the email. Um, so yeah. So the question is two of them, basically how much protein should I be getting? Because bariatric lifestyle and sports nutrition lifestyle, there's not really a whole bunch out there Mm -hmm. for, you know, what you're supposed to be eating if you want to be a weightlifter or body lifter or, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, And uh, so how much should I be eating based on this in-body scan is what I'm assuming you guys are going to use. And then with all of the other bone issues that I have, 
I have watched episodes where Adam says, nope, you don't have knee problems. <laughs> so, but I do. Um, I am working on squatting, which is something that my orthopedic told me not to do anymore. Um, but I have started doing that again. I have started learning how to do deadlifts, which are a lot easier than squatting, mind you. Um, but so how can I, how can I increase my muscle strength and, and the bone density, because that is something at my age that I have to worry about, um, without causing further damage to my joints. Cause I do have osteoarthritis. Yeah. Great. Okay. Great All question. Right. So let's back up, uh, for a second. So bariatric surgery is where they essentially reroute the stomach, create a new stomach for you, very small. Um, and this changes uh, things, right? You can't eat as much at one sitting and nutrient absorption issues become uh, a reality, right? So I'm assuming yep. your doctor has you on um, multiple supplements. You get nutrient tested to make sure that you're not reaching any yes. deficiencies. Okay. Correct. Um, yeah. You can't. I do have thalassemia, so I will always have an iron deficiency. Okay. So. Okay. Um, yep. You can't eat a lot at one sitting. So you're nope. going to have to eat small essentially small meals all day long. Believe it or not, the bariatric diet actually has a lot more in common with a bodybuilder diet than the average person. Like when you look at a bodybuilder, they tend to eat six, seven, eight meals a day. Um, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be doing that and you're going to try and take your protein targets and divide it up over all those meals. Now, what are your protein targets? Uh, use your target body weight. So what body weight is your target? And I would aim for that maybe a little less than that for in grams of protein. Do you know what your target body weight is or where your, where your body weight, I guess I hate to say it this way, but should be for someone your height. Do you know what that would look like? I do not. How tall are you? Five, five and a half. Okay. I would aim for about 120 grams of protein a day. Um, that's not your ideal body. That's not your target body weight. Your target body weight is probably closer to 150, but 120 is going to get you where you want. So go 120 divided by, however many meals you have in a day, which is probably closer to five or six, yeah. and then hit that in grams of protein each meal and eat it first. This is going to be the priority yes. of your meals. So whatever you have your small meal, eat the protein first so that you hit those targets. Hit 120 grams of protein a day to start. Now, you mentioned your joint pain, osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. This is a type of arthritis that develops uh, because of what they would say is overuse, um, but really what it is, is it's poor movement patterns on joints. And so you get wear and tear, an autoimmune issue starts to develop in the joint, and then you start to get the arthritic type of stuff. And so one of the best ways to work with this is to improve your movement patterns, improve your strength and move better. Uh, you also, you also, so you asked about your joints, you asked about building muscle, you asked about building bone density. The answer is the same for all of those. It's going to be proper and appropriate strength training. Yep. Okay. Proper and appropriate strength training is going to be your best friend. What does that look like? I want you to move. First off, if you could work with a trainer or a movement specialist at least once a week, that's going to be so valuable for someone like you because, uh, there's gonna be such an individual variance with, with your exercise technique and what would be appropriate for you that I can give you general advice right now, but if I watch you yeah. move and train yeah. you. And if you're unfamiliar with these exercises in general, like uh, to be guided through that yes. process is, is going to be crucial yeah. to do it correctly. Yeah, but a good guiding principle would be this. Train within, <clears throat> within your limits, but, but get to the edge. Meaning, let's say you practice a squat, okay? Um, and you watched our videos. You, okay, this is what a good form looks like. I'm going to try doing the squat. Go down until you start to feel like it starts to bother your joints. That's your depth that you start with. Mm -hmm. So that might be a half squat or a quarter squat to start, to start yeah. with. Okay. And then work on that. And each time you practice the exercise, try to get a little bit deeper with your squat and try to continue to work towards that edge and then wait and see how you feel the day after and the day after that. Did you judge it properly? Okay. I think I feel okay. Or, uh Oh, I went a little too far. I'm going to back off on the next session. And so slowly progress your strength and range of motion uh, through some of these basic exercises and your joints will start to feel better um, as a result. And this is where props and, and assistance really helps, like a TRX strap or something you can hold on to while you're kind of dropping into that range of motion. And 
you really want to find out like wh where those limits are and where that threshold lies. So that way too, when you go down and you squat, you want to be able to get to the position where it's, you can, you can sit in it and then that's not the end of the work. Once you get to that depth, you want to really squeeze your muscles and you want to really train them to be able to respond and to be able to provide you with, uh, you know, the type of muscle recruitment to then um, make that uh, strength part of the movement to, to get stronger as your way up. So um, really like it's about muscle tension and it's about the tempo being super, super slow. So you can really recognize how your body's kind of reacting, whether or not you're, you're stable and secure and strong, or whether you have a little bit of instability there. So a couple things, one, I'd like Doug to give you access to our private forum so that we can communicate through this process with you. And if there's anything that we can do to help you along your journey, if you feel comfortable enough, I would love to see videos of you performing some of these movements so I can get better insight on where we see maybe a sticking point or we can give you a, a regression to an exercise that will help us out. Um, I'm going to take a shot and a guess at something that might that you that might get some good value from because I've had clients uh, just like you and in this in, in this situation too with your arthritis like I would grab um, a pole or a tree something small that I can hold on to and I would I would walk myself down into a squat so in other words you're you're standing and the pole is like or the squat rack whatever you have access to is between your legs and you are working your way down all the way until you can get this, as deep as you can comfortably when you get to that range of motion where you can you can hold that position hold that for 5 to 10 second holds and then you I'd have you come out of it and then go back in it that's a really good way to start to progress the depth of your squat uh it's safe so you have support with a prop right there justin i think was alluding to that a little bit with like a, a trx strap that would work you know like a suspension trainer yeah or even the dumpy squat would be amazing once you progress from that i mean i wouldn't jump right to that but that would be a really good way to then teach your body to generate more force and really it's it's about, what kind of squat was that justin it's called a, a dumpy squat you have a stick and you're pushing uh, upward. We have a video. Yeah, we have a, do have a video okay. for that. So we'll that would be the progression to what I said, right? Yeah. The regression. So okay. the, st the starting point would be walking down the pole as deep as you can get into the squat, holding that position for five uh -huh. to 10 second holds, come out of it, go back down it, do that for, you know, five, five to 10 reps and try to progress that, right? So every day you're trying to do a little bit more of that. You're, you're trying to do a few more reps of it, getting a little bit deeper. That's a good place to start with working on the squat. I got, I got an easier one for you, Jennifer, that you could probably just figure out right now. Like you're sitting in a chair right now. Yeah. If you push back a little bit, put your hands out in front of you, like you're a zombie, stand up slowly and then sit down slowly. So don't plop into the chair, but try to control your descent, sit fully down and then stand back up. There's your squat. And that tends to be a really great regression for somebody. It's a really good place to who start. has pain in their knees. In fact, if you want to do one right now, I could watch you. Yeah. You want to try that? You want to back up a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, good. You got another chair back there. Yeah. Get it out of the way. <laughs> All right. So you're just going right, to sit. So just you get, want me to sit down first? Yeah. yeah first, slowly. Sit, first sit down. First sit down. You sit down and okay. then we'll get up and down. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now are your knees, okay. uh, your Arms knees, out. your feet are under your knees. Yep. So you yes. want to lean okay, forward good. at like Now lean degrees. forward and slowly stand up. Slowly and slowly stand up. Okay. Now sit your buck back and slowly sit down. Don't plop down and then go ahead and sit. Yep. That's it. Yep. That's a rep. Did that hurt your knees? A little bit. <laughs> okay. okay. So you want to try it again and you want to slow down and move in a okay. way to where it doesn't hurt your knees or you get minimal, very, very minimal pain when you do that. Okay. But that's it. Now you can actually put a pillow on the chair so you don't have to sit down as low. And that mm -hmm. would be maybe where you would regress, but it's a very easy way to right. practice squatting. Yeah. And it takes out that change of direction that happens at the bottom where people tend to hurt. Now, can you tighten your stomach just sitting there? Is that something you have access to yes okay <laughs> so as you do that i sorry I, I'm really confused by that question i know it's, it's a weird question it's a weird question but i'm getting somewhere with this okay <laughs> this is all part of stability okay so as you go back to kind of sit down like you're doing the squat 
try try to brace. Okay, so you can kind of slowly sit down. Yeah, the brace your core. The slower you sit down okay. to the chair, right, yeah, the more Yeah, I did not work. do that. I know okay. I didn't brace my core when I was sitting. Okay. Yeah, it's like yeah. pretend like someone's going to tickle you. <laughs> you yeah. kind of tighten it up. There yeah. you go. So yeah. that's, that's just one little thing I wanted to add. There you go. Okay. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to put you in the forum and uh, keep up with us in the forum so we can continue to kind of help you out a little bit, okay? Yeah, I appreciate it. Good. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? S symmetry or starter? What do you think you should have starter. for us? Starter. Yeah, starter. Let's send, yeah. you a, let's send you a program. We'll send you starter. We'll get you to symmetry. After okay. That. Yeah. 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 Starter. Starter is a good place for you to start. And like I said, as if you feel comfortable with putting putting the videos in the forum, which by the way is what people do in there. Uh, if you do that, then we'll be able to give you feedback along the way, and we'll we'll slowly progress you through all this stuff. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate it. You yeah. got it. Yeah. You got. Because like this. I said, there's not a lot of stuff out there. So, and I mean, I found you guys totally by accident, to be honest. <laughs> Because you guys are explicit in your language, so I had a block on there because my kid watches my YouTube. Oh, so sorry. It, it, Sal happened to be on somebody else's radio. Oh wow, that's great. Uh, pod show, my podcast. Sorry, and uh, that's how I ended up finding you guys. So oh, yeah, wow. this this is you know progressing me is is going to be awesome. I know it. Awesome, awesome. thanks, Jennifer. Well, if, you're, it. if you're ever in California, give us a call so we can give you a hug. Okay. Oh yeah, definitely. You got it. All right, Jennifer. all right. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Bye bye. Yeah, Doug's right. We say too many bad words. Yeah. Like Doug over there smiling. Yeah. See, told imagine you. if we were squeaky clean, <laughs> vindicated. Yeah. 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 Uh, she, I, you know, God, the club we all worked in over there in Santa Teresa was across the street from mm -hmm. bariatric. Trained a lot of surgery. people. Yeah, yeah. we all got a lot of clients Same. like that. You know. Yeah. But the the diet. Here's the thing: a lot of people aren't don't know when they get this surgery, you, you're going to battle a lifetime of potential nutrient deficiencies. It gets really hard yeah. to absorb nutrients. And you just can't necessarily, you can't really eat a normal way anymore. You have to eat small meals all day long uh, in order to adequately nourish yourself because you just you just can't do the typical breakfast, lunch, and dinner yeah. you know, type of deal. Uh, look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. They're all free. They're all awesome. You can also find us all on Instagram. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam.